everyone. Welcome to the Spotlight, one of the newest features on Young Entertainment. Today we have Ryan, the Rated R, with us. And he it's only right that this project starts off with the creator of the website, the Rockcast <laughs> Project. Dude! Oh, man. It's a lot of... I was, on a, I was on a good start, man. I know you were on a good start, but it, you're putting a lot of laurels on a lot of uh i don't know clout more <laughs> like a lot of love on my name it's just it just feels weird to to hear a lot of respect on my name continue do what you're doing yeah so just to give you a brief overview of how this is going to go i'm going to ask three questions and then after that you can just shamelessly self-promote so <laughs> all right i've got no problem with that all right so my first question is how did young entertainment start like, where did this idea come from? Oh, okay. Uh, where did Young Entertainment... Okay, to understand where... Like, first of all, for those who don't know me, um, I'm a very creative person. I like creating elements. That's just who I am. Creating led me to writing, which led me to improv. I hope nobody sees those videos on YouTube. Um, to improv, to writing, to history, to like everything I do has always been a, a, an element of writing and developing projects. That's what I'm good at. And I know I, I, I'm good at it. How did Young Entertainment start? It started with me, Pars, and Rudy Playmaker. Um, all of us just talking and having conversations in, in the basement and being like, yo, what would happen if we put those conversations out to the world? You know, because we're having conversations that I think everybody are having in their basements at one point or another. And uh, it eventually led to the first episode of the Blackjack Pack. And when we saw the Blackjack Pack grow, uh, we brought in the Rap Clash in, uh, which is for those who don't know, Alexa, I'm not even sure you know this, but the Rap Clash, actually, you do know that the Rap Clash is older than Young Entertainment. Yeah. Because um, I remember back in our university days, you were writing all those <laughs> articles. Yeah, uh, getting 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 views a year. And uh, what was so good about it was, um, and this is the funny part, this is kind of part of the Young Entertainment story, is that um, for those who don't, and I'm giving you guys a behind the scene look here, is that we put out the first episodes of the Blackjack Pack. And I'm like, yo, this is really good. And I had tried multiple times to do a rap class podcast. Multiple times, multiple radio stations. There were uh, a lot of them, like the ideas were worked. We had like two, three different pilots for the show, just to let you know. Um, but it didn't pan out due to time, uh, creative differences. And finally, the pandemic was the last straw. Uh, so... I, said, you I know think what? the pandemic was the last stop for a lot of people in their creative um, exactly. dawns. Exactly. The, the last straw cut a lot of people creatively. But I said, you know what? The Blackjack Pack, the first episode was really good. It was the last dance. And I called up my boy, Aryan, who does the, the intro music for the Rap Clash to this day. Amazing. All love to you, my brother. And we did an episode an hour long about Black Lives Matter. And it was insane. It was insane. The reactions we got, the text messages we got and everything. And um, after that, Paris, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to page Paris here, but Paris was so mad. <laughs> he was so mad. He's like, how did you put this on the YouTube channel? You didn't confront. You didn't talk to anybody first. You didn't do anything. But we made numbers. We, we, and I'm like, yo, we made numbers. And from there, they're just like, okay, then we can't keep calling the channel the blackjack pack what are we going to call it so me Paris, and rudy we were in a like a legit call for two three hours trying to figure out a name and young entertainment was what we came up with i made a logo real quick that's the logo we have to this day and then boom young entertainment was born nice so it was born out of me not listening to other people and doing my own way but like that's what a creative so does. Basically, you in a <laughs> nutshell. You for the last four years I've known you. Okay. Sadly enough, yes. But um, it's led to a lot of amazing things, you know, because of the podcast, 
Um, I was able to focus more on the blog because I didn't have to focus on doing news stories every single week, um, which gave space for you to come onto the show, for Isaiah and Caden to have their own place and their own place to be creative as well. And eventually the growth of Young Entertainment to the point where we have seven, eight different brands within the channel. So I'm excited and happy for the future. That's beautiful. That is a beautiful, beautiful story that stems out of you not listening to nobody. So, <laughs> but like, did you expect anything else given no, what you know about me? Actually, no, no, I did not. Like, um, I remember in, in high school, there's four types of leaders in the world. Well, actually there are five, but there is the elephant, the slightly emotional, does whatever they need to do, but the job always gets done at the end. There is the um, bird who oversees everything, makes sure everybody on the team is okay, but it's really slow because making sure everybody's okay and stuff. There's the mouse who does the work in the background and there's a lot, but like they'll never actually work with the team. And then finally, you have the sheep that follows the loudest voice, but does their work really well. Um, as you can see, I'm very much of an elephant sometimes, and other times I'm very much a um, a, a mouse because I'm always in the work. I'm always in the back working. So, look, you could complain about me working and just doing all this by myself, but like, look at where it got us. Amen. <laughs> So moving on to our second question, what's your favorite project? And I know you're excited to answer this question. Oh, favorite project. Oh my God. Um, that depends. That depends. I, every project is different and you love them differently. As a creative, I get this opportunity to work on so many different brands. I loved TEP because I feel like TEP is when I get to be really an honest version of myself. It's not the rated r per se it's just ryan being ryan and i know there's three types of ryan's there's friend ryan <laughs> there's what was it friend ryan ryan the guy ryan, ryan the, the guy, guy and ryan the and... professional <laughs> <laughs> and but yeah it, it, when it comes to tep i get to be just myself and we crack jokes and ask dumb questions that all university students and young adults ask themselves Young Street Reacts is just insane, the stuff we get to react to on the internet. I love the rap clash for the camaraderie that we have. Um, we don't need to be producing stuff to have fun. Like, y'all don't get to see the, the, the group chat, but sometimes Caden just cracking jokes or sending videos, and you're like, what in the world is going on here? So me, as like the camaraderie. <laughs> going through the rap class and being like what the hell did i miss it's like you you don't tune in for two days on the group chat and you're like god you missed a lot um <laughs> for the blackjack pack it's how every like i i don't need to talk to them to get the job done it's everybody knows what they got to do We've been doing this for a year and a half almost two years at this point so like everybody knows their role um, and every, like the new projects are coming in. I'm feeling really, really confident about them too. So I don't have any one favorite. I'm like a parent with like eight children. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not gonna say which one's my favorite, but like, they're all my favorites. That's my cop out answer. So you don't have one that you give a little extra? Uh, depends. These new, like these new projects, I'm giving more time because they require more time, right? Because if you count the amount of time that we spend editing or researching, maybe for the rap clash, uh, same thing that we do for Young Street Reacts, I've got to catch up, <laughs> right? And create teams that are able to take this project to the next level. So until I get to the, like creating teams that can do that, you know? it is what it is that's the perfect answer and our last question is what do you see for your projects in the future uh um now that by the time i release this will be 2022 um but like my goal was always to get one like 
a thousand subscribers. I want to get to a thousand and then from there go to the next level. And I want to create content that people enjoy. And if they don't enjoy, are able to openly critique. Because I've learned this from improv and all the other creative things I've done. I don't care if you cheer me or you boo me. Never really been much of my problem. My goal is to make you react to what we're doing here. Uh, Because that is what I want to do. I am an entertainer. I entertain. I create. So if I don't get a reaction, that's worse than you booing me. <laughs> like, yeah. So I need to make sure that I get a reaction some way, somehow. So if it makes people react, then I did my job perfectly well. And if I get all my people to eat, you get to eat. Isaiah gets to eat. Caden gets to eat. Play gets to eat. Pars gets to eat. Everybody gets to eat off this table. Doe gets to eat. Sabrina, Eleni, MJ, everybody. I'm even more successful than bill gates in that case in my mind amen. at least amen because all my people got to eat beside me it's not just me just eating alone because uh yeah that's really that's really what's up that's a beautiful answer i really admire that answer and now now's the time to shamelessly promote yourself <laughs> oh. come on Mike, get those sub- <laughs> get those subscribers Get those subscribers. Get those reactions. Okay. First of all, I'm going to say this. Um, while I could definitely plug my stuff in, and I will plug myself in for Young Entertainment. There's no cap. Um, I'd like to talk about the people, uh, like the people around me and the st- some of the stuff that they're doing. Because that, that stuff blows my mind. If I consider um, one of my friends from high school, Austin, he has a YouTube channel called aj sours and yo it's got five thousand subscribers and every time i i like i watch his videos and every time i'm like yo i'm so proud of him i'm so happy for him i want the best for him so big shout outs to you austin it's nothing but love uh come through whenever uh my friend ashley uh she's supposed to come on the everybody podcast someday she's doing some crazy stuff i'm so happy for her too we just added so what now to young entertainment which is a brand new addition, a lifestyle blog to bring you closer to God. Um, that's crazy. Doe is, has been killing it on there since 2018. And now she's bringing all of her expertise to um, Young Entertainment and is using our platform to even grow herself and grow the faith. So I'm happy for that. We've got brand new projects here. The Spotlight is killing it. And um Let's, let's just say you guys are going to get to see my nerdy side, uh, hopefully in the coming months, my darker side and my nerdier side uh, in the coming projects that we've got a few uh, seasonal um, things. So we're going to probably look into like seasonal content that we're working on right now behind the scenes uh, with Sabrina, with MJ, with Kush. So definitely keep your eyes out on that. Like, share, and subscribe, and you'll definitely see that. So those were all my questions. That was some shameless self-promotion. <laughs> <laughs> and promoting everybody else. Oh, I my. did such a good job at promoting, he dropped his phone. So. Oh, no, my, my, my camera, no. But like, see, here's the thing. I feel like we've got to promote ourselves to a certain degree, but also promote the people around us. Everybody got to eat. Um, but it's come from a place of me being really reclusive at a point, you know, um, I don't really do social media like that. For those who know me, I don't really do. I'm not on Instagram. I don't answer my, my phone. If you know me, you call me. That's how you're going to get to me. Um, if you're in an emergency, don't text him. If you're in an emergency, don't, don't don't text me. Don't be that dumb. Um, don't play yourself in that manner, but, um, no, there was a time where I really like cut off from social media and because I, I used to spend days and days just like looking at other people, like, oh my goodness, you're doing well and you're in university or you've got a good job and all that jazz. And I kept comparing myself to them instead of actually myself going out there and doing the work. Um, so I cut off social media and now I'm really only on there whenever I need to like promote 
something or I need to say a message or I feel like pushed to be there. But if I'm yeah. not pushed to be there, you're not going to catch me there. I'm going to look at some stuff. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Snap. But you're not going to catch me just posting just to post because I have my voice here on YouTube. I have my voice with the people around me. And I think that's more than enough. And I feel like that's the story for a lot of people who've started their who've started their social media or started some something online where mm. they felt like they've been comparing themselves and they realize that they're they are able to. Because I was just in a um in a meeting where I was asked to I was asked to use a word to describe how I feel about the upcoming projects that we were going to be doing. And the first word that came to my mind was able, because as soon as I start talking to people, the first time you talk, you you message me, I'm like, am I going to be able to do this? Am I going to be able to sit down and talk to people? Because my social skills are up there, but they're not up, up there. So mm -hmm. I, I said to myself, I'm able to do it because I have the resources to do it. And I have the people that back me, which I feel like that's what Young Entertainment does. It's yeah. a whole family that of people who encourage people and per, um, push push us to be the best version of ourselves. That was, that was a hundred percent. Um, when I look at, okay, I had, um, multiple, like, as I said, there were multiple different pilots versions for the rap clash. And one of the many things that eventually led me to either not going towards that route of going, of signing with a podcaster or a radio thing and just doing it on my own here on the internet, on YouTube, um, was because I didn't felt, I didn't feel supported. I didn't feel like they really saw my vision for what it was. And I'm so glad I didn't take that route, but I told myself, look, if we're doing this entertainment thing as a creative director, now I get the opportunity to really support and be like, okay, if you got this idea, shoot your shot. And I want to like, let's your idea maybe as an A or like an, an eight, let's get it to a nine, right? And every single step will grow about it. Well, I'll talk to you about it. I talk to, I talk to you about it. I talked to Sabrina about it. I talked to all the other people about it. Okay. We saw this episode. What did you think? What did you see? And how do we do it better? And that was part of my, part of my mentality going into young entertainment is I want to help everybody grow. And that was exactly it. I wanted to support all the creative people around me. So thank you. That's a really big honor. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just, uh, what else, I, I don't know what else to say. It's been a crazy year and a half of doing this. We started this, what, maybe 2020, mid 2020. And we're over, hopefully at the time that this comes out, maybe over 800, 900 subscribers around that range growing exponentially every day so like i'm not disappointed <laughs> it's like what's I'm, there to be disappointed in there's literally nothing to be disappointed in no so um just continuous growth and yeah. uh if i can take this time not to shamelessly self-promote but to talk to all the creatives and all the people that are going to watch this video and if they learned anything from my story um it's that you are capable of doing anything that you set your mind to. You just need to tune out the haters, tune out the people who are negatively going to impact you and tune in. Listen to this key part. You need to tune in to those who will believe in you and who will criticize you out of love. Amen. Like once you tune into those people who are just like, oh yeah, I saw your show. You could do one, two, three things better um, because I saw one, two, three things. Yo, that's constructive criticism and they will help you grow exponentially. I read it in the comment section. I read the comment section like the, all the time because I want to tune in and be, I, and tune in and see what people think and feel about a video after we put it out. Because 
I learned this from improv. My God, going back to my improv days, is that I liked the Dude, you when you talk you're... about improv enough that we need to see some videos. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. We're not doing that. But um, in improv, you're taught to continuously look at the crowd and to gauge what's going on there to be able to see, okay, are you doing well? Are you not doing well? Can you improve? How can you do better? Um, and I've learned to do that. And I've learned to do that with Young Entertainment, support you guys all while being able to criticize and bring you guys to the next level. So I hope that this, the spotlight is just the beginning of that, at least for the, for this. Yeah. The goal of the spotlight is just to shine a light on all those people who are hustling every single day and i can mm -hmm. name 10 people i can name more than 10 people more than 10 people that i know that you know that are hustling every single day they deserve the same light they deserve the same encouragement the same constructive criticism so mm -hmm. we're going to be coming out with a couple episodes we're going to start determining the schedule at some point of how we're going to do it and maybe if they are Maybe we'll give them a platform, we'll give them a YouTube platform or something for them to be able to promote if they want to do it on a long haul, long haul, or if they want to do like something short term just so that they can get an attention to a project that they're doing. All right. Uh, with that being said, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We'll hit you on the next time here on Young Entertainment. Wait a minute. This isn't my show. What am I doing? Yo, do, do what you got to do. This is your show. <laughs> See how instinctive this is? So this has been the spotlight. This has been the spotlight. Like, share, comment, subscribe, react. Hit up the website. Look at all the projects that we have going on. And maybe you'll see yourself on the spotlight one day. This has been the first episode with Ryan the Rated R. And yeah. Peace. Peace.